Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about ideas or where they come from. So I'm Daniel Norton, photographer here in New York. I make videos like this about technique and philosophy and gear sometimes. Um, and if you're interested in that kind of stuff, go ahead and subscribe. So I get lots and lots of questions. This is probably one of the, besides very specific gear questions, which I get a lot of as well, uh, is where do you get ideas from? Where do you get inspiration from? And I actually, uh, this could be a whole series really. Um, but I talk about it in a bunch of different videos. I talk about where certain ideas come from or some things that inspire me. But I also realize that there is a difference, I guess, between ideas and inspiration, right? Um, ideas being maybe more concrete in my mind. Um, I'm often inspired when I see something to do something, right? For instance, you might be inspired by uh, your friends or your, your you know, uh, you know, acquaintances or people you work with or, you know, uh, someone you're in a relationship with and they might inspire you and make you want to be creative and go out there and shoot something, but you might not necessarily want to photograph them. You know, that's not what they're inspiring you to do. They're inspiring you just in general um, to create art, um, which is actually kind of interesting. Sometimes I hear people bat around the word muse and, and a lot of times they just kind of, it's like somebody they work with a lot and they'll say that, but that's not necessarily in my mind what a muse is, but that's a whole other thing. Maybe that's, that's another video, but here I'm going to talk specifically about ideas. Um, because after the last video I did with the, where I was talking about how I, um, you know, did the, the Elvis is in the desert and stuff. Um, you know, a lot of people were like, well, how do you come up with ideas? So I thought I would just, again, this is going to be one, maybe I'll make a bunch of videos like this. We'll see. Um, uh, but I thought I would talk about it a little bit. So ideas are like very specific ideas for shoots. This is not something that I do a lot. So I'll start off by saying that generally what I do a lot, I should say, it's not something I do a lot for my portraits. I generally go into these things. Um, if it's a pretty general portrait, I'll go in there fairly open-minded and I will kind of adjust on the fly. Um, but I like to have a general idea of what I'm going to do um, before I walk in. And a lot of times when people say ideas, they're usually thinking bigger things like, oh, you're going to have them wear fairy wings or fly through the air or have bubbles or light them on fire or have lava, you know, whatever. That's not generally the kind of work that I do. I don't usually come up with this idea of like, I want to shoot a model, you know, standing on their tiptoes on the top of a building with, you know, planes flying by. Like, that's just not how I think. Um, it's not how I personally create, uh, though many people do. So, so I don't go down that, that route that often. However, uh, especially for commercial projects, you are in that position, right? Somebody approaches you and they say, hey, Daniel, I'm looking for something to hold up. Oh, it'll be the classic. Hey, Daniel, we want you to do some ads for this mug, right? Well, now I got to come up with some ideas, right? Um, and so I kind of walk through one basic process. And I think this is probably like the most, uh, what I would call the obvious uh, idea, machine, if you will. Um, and that is to look at the thing that you're going to do or the, the subject that you want to cover or the location that you're going to. And either through your own memory or through people you talk to, or probably simple enough through like a Google search, start looking for things that are related to that. Okay. So if it's for a company specifically, then you want to think about who their customer is and think about that. So going back to like the Elvis thing, right? So we just, since that's one that we just talked about, you know, I knew I was going to be in Las Vegas, right? I knew I was going to be near the desert, right? So one of the things that I kind of wanted to do was experience that because everybody shoots in Las Vegas. And I did actually shoot in Las Vegas. I did it the year before. So if you look back, there's a bunch of videos like in Las Vegas uh, proper. But I had um, that same year, I had gone out to uh, to the Salt Flats and also I think uh, Red Rock, you know, and we, we went and I think we shot some videos there. It, it, we just went anyways and, and it was awesome and it was beautiful and, it, and that inspired me to want to shoot, um, you know, in some kind of landscape. So then I did that, right? So, but now I was like, well, we're going to be in Las Vegas. Let's do something that's specific to Las Vegas to me. Like a desert is a desert and there's a lot of deserts and there's a lot of cool landscapes. Um, but Las Vegas is Las Vegas, you know, it's like it has this whole mystery behind it and you start thinking slot machines and you start thinking this. And, and I remembered back that um, years and years ago, I'd gone to Las Vegas. It was one of my first times going uh, as, as an adult um, and I went to this um, Rat Pack, as they call it, show where it was like impersonators, you know, um, Frank Sinatra and, uh, you know, Sammy Davis Jr. and uh, Dean Martin, you know, the, the, the Rat Pack uh, I know there's at least a couple more, but anyways, um, 
and I know this is not Elvis, but but it made me think. Oh yeah, you know Elvis has this long. Uh, Elvis, uh, Las Vegas has this long history of like entertainers that go there, and then I started thinking, well, what is the most iconic, you know, uh, impersonator in Las Vegas? And you know, it's Elvis for sure. I, I mean, in my opinion, so. You start thinking about it, and I was like, well, okay, well, I want to shoot Elvis. And I also wanted to shoot in a landscape, because I knew that. That had been the inspiration, right? So now I'm using my inspiration, plus my, you know, knowledge or research of the area, to now put these together to come up with an idea. Now I'm, well, I want to shoot Elvis, you know, out in the desert. And that could have been a lot of different ideas, depending on where you want to come from, right? Um, because I, I have this, uh, this I, I used to love to go on road trips, and road trips are so fun. I had this road trip idea, and I was like, oh, you know, old car, road trip. That's how my mind goes. Some people's mind might have been like, okay, well, Elvis is hitchhiking in the desert and, or lost in the desert or being eaten by zombies in the desert or, you know, he's discovering aliens or being abducted by aliens in the desert because, you know, people for a long time thought Elvis maybe was abducted. You know, all these different things, right? Any of those could have been viable ideas, and all of them might have been really cool. And it really kind of comes down to looking at the situation that you're going to be in and kind of taking the obvious thing first, right? What's obvious about Las Vegas is that it's in a desert. And what's obvious about Las Vegas is that there's a lot of entertainers and impersonators, especially. So taking those two things together and then putting them together to create what is the idea. Now, of course, taking it a step further, I understood and knew, of course, that there wasn't just impersonators that did regular Elvis, as they call it, there was also female Elvis, and there was, you know, uh, you know, the other Elvises, all the other various, you know, you've got a black Elvis, you've got a, you know, uh, the Asian Elvis, you've, you've got, uh, there was a, you know, a mini Elvis is what he called himself, you know, and the, all these different Elvises are out there, right, and you, and you think about that, right, and you, and you think, oh, well, Las Vegas is like so over the top, um, it'd be fun to do something with all the mix. So you see how like it becomes a, it snowballs into an idea, right? So again, if you had if your subject was this mug, it might be well, okay, this mug is, you know, what do you put in a mug? It might be coffee, it might be tea, right? And then okay, so let's say it's coffee. Well, when somebody drinking coffee, maybe in the morning, right? So now this starts you start getting these ideas, it starts working. Oh, maybe there's somewhere, you know, clearly you know, you want to show them comfortable, you don't want people suffering with the mug, right? So maybe we're going to shoot some kind of, you know, what do people, let's think of like a weekend morning where you can kind of lounge around and enjoy your cup of coffee. So what might you be doing? Oh, maybe some nice breakfast, or maybe you're out, you know, on the, on the porch or whatever, there's grass around or there's whatever, or maybe it's a rainy day. You know, you can really pull ideas from the initial like kind of obvious thing, right? I wouldn't look at this mug and be like, okay, well, I'm going to put beer in it. I mean, yeah, you could drink beer out of this mug, and I'm sure people do drink beer out of this mug like this, right? But that's not the obvious thing, right? So when you're looking for ideas, go big first. Like, go with the most obvious thing first. You can get more minute, and your ideas will become creative and really interesting from there. But if you, if you, if you, if you grab the big picture first, it will really help you start to narrow it down. Like, what is the obvious thing? This is why whenever I'm approached to do a commercial project, I always ask, who is the customer? Because that is super, super, super important, right? If we're doing, let's say, this mug, right? We know that, uh, you know, if we know the mug, this particular you know demographic for this mug is whatever ages and whatever, whatever, then we're gonna make sure we shoot that, right? If the if the demographic for this mug is, you know, older uh, females, then I'm not gonna have you know a, a teenager, a, a teenage boy drinking from it necessarily, you know, um, unless it's maybe you're doing like a mom you know, thing, you know, you could do that too. So even that you could go that way, right? It's kind of, uh, um, you could take a lot of angles if you're creative, but that's really what it comes down to, right? So ideas versus inspiration. Ideas are the, the thing, the, the structure, the, the, the solid thing that you get. Um, inspiration is what makes you want to shoot, right? You're, when you're inspired, you want to create. You Usually for me, inspiration, you know, again, I've talked about this, but it comes from music, it comes from light that I see, it comes from interacting with people and just seeing how they react. That is that, you know. Um, now, you, now I will say this, right, because I just said at the beginning that I don't do, you know, a lot of my work, especially my portrait work, is not this, like, pre-planned stuff. A lot of times I've had to, uh, I've, I've had to work with musicians, and sometimes you don't know until very close uh, that you need to shoot them, and then you got to kind of just look at them and figure it out, right? Um, other times I listen to the music first and get inspired or get ideas from that. So, um, you know, that also helps a lot because if, like, clearly if you hear their music and it's about, you know, whatever – you can use that as a, as a basis for, uh, you know, for any ideas that you might have. 
you know, and you go from there. And of course, ask them because they're, they're creatives as well. That's the whole thing, right? You want to, when you're making a portrait, you really want to interact with your subject and do something that they're on board with and they think is a great idea. That way they'll be 100% into it. And when you're doing commercial work, you want to do something that goes in the line of the client. That way, again, they'll be more motivated and they'll want to, to they'll be like, oh yeah, I love that idea because we want to sell these mugs to, you know, such and such people or we want to do that, whatever, you know? And you might say, well, you know, who was the the the, the client for, you know, that the, the shoot with the Elvis is? Well, it was you, right? It was basically, uh, I knew that I was making the videos for uh, an internet audience that wanted to learn about lighting. You know, that's what my uh, show is generally about. On set is about being on set, doing lighting, uh, creating projects. Um, and this gave us an opportunity to shoot something that was very much like an assignment. So, you know, again, I made sure that I lit it. I could have just gone out to the desert with an Elvis and just shot it. I mean, I probably could, if I waited till the perfect golden hour and just shot the Elvises out there, it might have been fine, right? But that wouldn't have been anything to really teach. It would have been like, okay, so go when it's nice. I mean, I could have got one video out of it, basically, and I knew I wanted to get more because it was expensive. And, you know, again, I talked about that in another video. So um, think about it like that, you know. When, when you're trying to come up with an idea, Big picture, narrow it down, get more specific, bring in your own background, bring in, you know, creatives that are working with you on it uh, as far as idea wise. Um, and you'll get tons of ideas. I mean, they just start flowing. I uh, I usually say, uh, like when we would sit in, in meetings, you know, kind of come up with ideas, you almost want to get to the point where what you're saying is ridiculous. Like nothing should be off the table, you know, to a certain extent, let it push it, push it, push it, push it. Because eventually you're going to be like, okay, no, like that's okay, that we don't want that. Because if you go too far, right, then you also know where your border is in that direction. You know, you know where you want to start, you know where you can't go. So your your idea that's going to work is somewhere in the middle. And that's basically the idea that you're going to move forward with. And then, you know, and I'll talk more about creating. I mean, we'll spin these into, like I said, I'm going to do another video about uh, actually planning like a fake project. So maybe I'll come up with a, some, some product that we have to shoot and whatever, and we'll figure it out. Um, but anyways, that's something in the future. I might do more of these videos about ideas and about inspiration. If this is something you guys want to see, let me know. Um, it seems like I get this question a lot, so I think it might be interesting. Um, and maybe we'll kind of walk through, uh, you know, how to do it. I was actually going to do a screenshot and, like, go Google, like I was about to say it, but then I started talking and it got away from me. So now we're good. So that's why I'm sitting inside, if you're wondering why I'm not on the porch. Because uh, it's actually a beautiful day. In any case, um, if you have not already, uh, go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell so you get all the notifications. And I'll see you next time.